we're on the premises. Wi-Fi is available. You'll see the cards on your table. And we'll be having a great interactive panel discussions today, keynote speeches, announcements of the Black Advisory of the Hitch Masters winners. So stay tuned for that later. And you're welcome to ask your questions through the CASA Foundation YouTube live stream, and you can join us for conversation and using the hashtag FOA2022, as well as hashtag Friends of Outlast on different social media platforms. I also encourage everyone to visit the 360 degree state of the art photo booth that will be set up later this afternoon in the marketplace so you can capture memories of today. And remember to share your live stream link with your friends. It's youtube.com forward slash CASA Foundation. We have a packed agenda today, and we're running a little bit late, which is natural. And so to kick off this morning, it is a great pleasure that I welcome delegates from 15 nations who are both in attendance and virtually as well. And it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jean Augustine, and remember to who is in the audience. Was, was the first, first Black Canadian, Canadian woman, woman to serve, to serve as, as federal minister, minister of the of Crown, Crown and, and member, member of Parliament. Parliament. She, is she is a, a very, very esteemed, esteemed politician, politician, and her work and her tireless work for Canada is absolutely astounding. Uh, she's a national treasure. I grew up watching Dr. Augustine on TV. So, Dr. Augustine, if you'd like to say a few words to the French Catholic Conference, we'd be honored. Merci beaucoup et bonjour. It is indeed a pleasure to look out of this room and see faces and see individuals who are committed to, I would say, the cause. To be to here be at, eight at 8 o'clock in the morning, morning, morning between 8, eight and 9 o'clock on a Saturday, Saturday morning, morning shows devotion. devotion. So, I so I want to begin by acknowledging Dr. Olu and her team, team, and, and, her team and, and all those who worked so hard to put these past few days, days together, together to give to us give such enlightening conversations. To bring to the table people from about 15 nations um, and to have us focus on what is important in this day, in this time, after COVID and after the separation and after the years. Uh, 2021 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, when we were so close. I want to acknowledge uh, the presence of um, I see MLA, um, MPPs and others who are here, um, David Smith, and uh, from the provincial um, government, and of course, Dr. Wendy Sukir, who is well known for the work that she's been doing in community with community for community and all of you who are here this morning and all of you who are present in this conference came because you want to contribute you want to offer your skills and learning and you want to make a difference to how we move forward as community. It is important that we be positive, that we, those words of partnership and collaboration uh, are important in how we do the work. There are all kinds of sayings out there. If you want to go far, then you go. Um, if you want to go fast, then you go alone. If you want to go far, then you then go with others and you take others with you. And I think, and I think we come together, together in a conference setting, setting because, because we realize the importance of going far and the importance of collaboration and partnerships in this, uh, in this world.
Philippines and in other places where, up in, up where we spend our time uh, making more contributions. So I'm very pleased to have an opportunity to say a few words to welcome you as part of the CASA uh, Foundation Advisory and uh, to say how pleased we are that uh, we have been able to come together, have a successful uh, event and uh, have the opportunity to network, have the opportunity to share experiences and to learn from this 2022 conference. Merci beaucoup. Uh, Again, to everyone, bonjour à tous. Uh, bienvenue encore pour la deuxième édition de uh, Friends of Africa Economic Development Summit. Uh, my name is Imanzi Kantari, and I have the distinct pleasure of uh, welcoming you all and to introducing um, a special representative of CASA Foundation, uh, Dr. Oliatillian Oyalade. Uh, Dr. Oleade has seamlessly attained over two decades of professional executive management and leadership expertise domestically and internationally. She has also has an impressive academic background and has earned a bachelor's degree in philosophy from Ondo State from the University of Nigeria and received an MBA from Nigeria's premier university of life. She also completed executive management programs that sharpen and perfect her leadership skills and has graduated from Wharton School of Advanced Management. Um, in May 2016, Dr. Oleadi managed the International Bank Group's fund portfolio of $8 billion and had responsibility for fund investments as group executive for the bank's investments management between 20, 2007 to 2010. And just so also to note, so uh, Dr. Oleadi is the uh, the founder and the president of the CAS Foundation, and we are delighted to be here today and um, as one that has been here from, from the beginning. And again, just seeing just the growth and the evolution of the CASA Foundation. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How many times am I going to say that? All right. All right. Thank you Thank so you much again for coming this morning. It's uh, such a joy to welcome you all. At these sessions, I usually read a speech, and then, of course, a few of my mentors uh, usually will tell me, ah, we're going to have a full day of debate, so we had better just get started and get going. So I'm not really going to focus on that speech, you know, the long type of speech that I usually read. But then, I mean, uh, I'll, also give, I'll also give some talk. It's my thing to do. So. All right. Um, welcome again, everyone. It's such a joy to be here again this morning. This is day four, the grand finale of Friends of Africa 2022. Thank you so much for joining us and taking time out of your very busy schedules, you know, to join us again. First, permit me to observe all the protocols. Today, we have in our midst um, a lot of people, of our CEOs from uh, the private sector, uh, leaders from the government sector, a lot of entrepreneurs, startups, and so on. And so I just need to follow protocols by, you know, recognizing them. Today we have Dr. Jean Augustine, uh, somebody said a role model and, uh, well, a treasure, right? That's who she is to us. Dr. Jean Augustine to us, uh, not only is she the first Black member of parliament, first Black federal minister in Canada, you know, woman, woman minister in Canada, uh, but to us, she's also uh, a board advisor at CASA Foundation. So it gives us so much joy and pleasure to welcome her even today, um, you know, to the Friends of Africa Economic Development Co Conference. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for coming. Today, again, we have uh, with us uh, the Member of Parliament, Member of Provincial Parliament, um, the Honorable Dave Smith, who is with us today, uh, joining us for the first time at Friends of Africa at this 12th anniversary. Thank you again for coming. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, today we have with us also the Honorable uh, Amelia Kimbadi and uh, from the Republic of Uganda, the government of Uganda. She represents the government of Uganda here with us, uh, serving with the president as a senior advisor, uh, was, uh, was minister of uh, trade and industry uh, in, in Uganda. 
And so it's such a joy, it's such a pleasure to have you with us. Her Excellency uh, Fatima Mate Braule, the ambassador of Mali. The Republic of Mali is here with us again. So thank you so much for coming. There is, uh, I'm not sure if Rashid is here yet, the Consulate General of uh, the Kingdom of Morocco. Um, I, yeah, so he's here, I'm not sure where, but he's here and uh, speaking uh, the third panel, I believe. Uh, but we welcome you anyway, and I'm sure we'll recognize you once, once we see you in the room. Thank you again. And Professor Wendy Sukia is here also with us today. Professor Sukia was vice president at Rising University, and now founder of the Diversity Institute, uh, Toronto Metropolitan University, formerly Rising University. <laughs> She's here with us again today. And we have also with us Professor Sandrine Fromte. She's also from the University of Quebec at Montreal, uh, in charge of uh, School of Digital Marketing, uh, the business school at uh, ESG UCAM. Thank you again for coming. And we have Professor Vida Sheda. Uh, Professor Vida Sheda is also the lead at the International Business School at Centennial College uh, in Canada here with us. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you. Online today, we also have uh, Adekule Akintayo, uh, the head of technical production at the um, Qatar Petroleum, the government of Qatar, uh, will be also speaking on the third panel. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm not sure if you can show him, uh, but he's online already waiting. We have several other people. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have the Minister of Housing, Diversity and Inclusion holding a town hall with us, and that's uh, the Honorable Minister Ahmed Uzain will be holding his own town hall with us, the fireside chat, at exactly um, four o'clock today. So don't go away. Keep looking forward to all of this because we really need to have all of this uh, happening today and you you just don't want to miss that because it's a great opportunity for you to ask all the questions particularly as it relates to housing and such matters all right so uh we'll get started today first also let me apologize uh we like to you know we're stickler for punctuality we try to say that uh, but i think we're only about 25 minutes late already so please um pardon us for that all right uh we'll introduce people as they come in we have quite a number of them uh and then we'll, we'll let you know Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, we started Friends of Africa in uh, 2011 as a platform that will serve and cater to the needs of entrepreneurs and startup groups within our community. The idea of Friends of Africa is to ensure that people have a forum, people have a platform where they can actually bring their challenges, community challenges and business challenges, economic development challenges, things that people ordinarily would not find solutions to regularly in the community. And so we created the Friends of Africa to have that platform to ensure that people would meet with experts, advisors, and people like that who would help, help them develop their pitches, their business plans, and things like that. It would also be a forum where people could actually present their value proposition and uh, ensure that they have people within the community that could look at the value proposition in terms of their professional life or their business life and offer some pieces of advice, uh, you know, some insights based on what they have done. Uh, keep in mind, again, you can't build your business alone. You always need some support. And this exactly is uh, what Friends of Africa stands for. We started in 2011. Every October, we meet at a forum like this, but it, would, it was just once. Um, this particular year, uh, Friends of Africa grew to four days. We almost took the whole week, but we started on Wednesday. And the reason we did on Wednesday was to present to experts um, in the room, some of them in the room with us today, uh, the um, graduates from the Black Advisory Hub. And so that's where I'm going to start from quickly because the Black Advisory Hub started as a funded project of the government of Canada in 2021. Uh, CASA Foundation became approved by the government of Canada with its 11 partners as one of the recipients of the 5 million um, Black Entrepreneurship Fund. And so this was uh, riding on the back of all the work that CASA Foundation had been doing since 2011 in economic and community development. We would ordinarily have what you call the business uh, exhibition, the marketplace for young entrepreneurs, where they could showcase their businesses, where they could actually touch base with experts like yourselves in the room today and get some insights and get some feedback on what they're doing. And so that's some of the errors they made 
the new businesses wouldn't uh, fall into the same errors. And so that's how we started and then grew into Entrepreneur's Point, uh, where we now have a, a whole hub where entrepreneurs themselves can actually meet. A live office downtown Toronto on uh, Richmond Street, where people can actually sit, work, um, get incubated, you know, what you call an incubator, get trained on business building workshops on how to start your business, how to scale your business, how to get partners and things like that. And so these are some of the initiatives that Casa Foundation started um, following after the Friends of Africa. As we speak today, um, the Friends of Africa uh, has, you know, awarded over 200, I'm sure 200,000 in grant peaches, uh, grant awards, you know, through the peaches that we hold every year. And the peaches started this week on Wednesday as an online pitch, a national pitch, online part, uh, presenting 40 candidates, shortlisting them into 20, 10 uh, on Wednesday, and the remaining 10 in person. They are here in the room today, and the results of the award ceremony to about 10 uh, grant awardees of about $5,000 each will be announced today by our professor here because they were all the judges at the pitch session. That pitch itself is funded by the TD Bank of Canada, and they're also represented here today. And so it gives us great pleasure, and it's a great privilege and a honor for uh, in the community to be entrusted with um, you know, some of these uh, assignments and projects that we run uh, just for the betterment of the community in quotes and then just to advance young entrepreneurs. Um, so uh, I know for sure that the pandemic has dealt a huge blow to a lot of businesses, some of you in the room, uh, some of them are, you know, coming out of that. Uh, some of them are still watching and waiting, you know, to get the green light to step forward again and begin to move forward. I encourage you all to move forward. It's important that we keep moving. You know, it's important that we keep moving. Uh, I know that, um, like I said, I wasn't going to read the speech, but I think one of the things that quickly resonates with me is that uh, one of the things that I picked up from one of the books, one of the authors that I love to read, uh, John L. Mason. John L. Mason wrote the book, An Enemy Called Average. An Enemy Called Average. And uh, what the book, well, you know, I mean, of course, it has a lot of insight. But some of the things that I learned from that is that it is, I have found that it is better to be alone than in the wrong company. A single conversation with the right person can be more valuable than many years of study. This is so important to us as entrepreneurs to know the right connections, to know to connect with them, to know how to sustain the relationships, and to know how to build and ride on the back of the relationships that we have formed. This is so critical to success in the journey of entrepreneurship because the journey of entrepreneurship can be very cold, quiet, and alone. Um, you're struggling to do a lot of things. And that's why I know for sure, because I've been there. Uh, and I know that a lot of people might be in the room today wondering exactly what the next steps should be after a pandemic that has ravaged the land. Uh, what is important for each one of us is to get up again and get started. Find the right connections. Find the people to help you get started. And uh, definitely, like they say, the sky will no longer be <laughs> your limit. Um, it's also important to recognize an original. Yeah, of course, we build role models. And uh, a lot of the role models that you meet in the room today will give you some insights as you network with them. But imagine running as a copy when you know you can actually be an original. So our role models are here. But the idea then is for us to gain the benefits of the insights they have and their expertise. That's important at the end of the day, to become an original copy of who you were meant to be. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, without further ado, I am glad and I am pleased to um, you know, declare the Friends of Africa Economic Summit open, uh, this grand finale. I welcome you all and I encourage you all to enjoy the Friends of Africa. Thank you, everyone. Now it gives me um, the great honor and uh, really privileged and honored to invite the member of parliament, uh, uh, the Honorable David Smith, um, to come on and offer us his, uh, provide us some of his opening remarks so that we can really get started. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. So such a joy to meet you. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Can't hear you guys. Well, I got to say, it's so nice to get up early in the morning, as Dr. Augustine has just said. But it's Friends of Africa means so much to me. Um, it's my first time being here, and I've met some wonderful people already. But I have to go back always to Dr. Jean Augustine. 30 years, 30 years, I've known this wonderful person, and she always make herself available in the Africa diaspora and around the world. She's a wonderful person. And every time I see her, she always has something good to say about what's going on in these communities. The opportunity today to be here before you, before I start my remarks, at the table that I'm sitting at, I met Professor Wendy, Ambassador Fatima, and Senior Advisor to the Office of the President of Uganda, S. Amelia. I also have my associate and assistant to me sitting at the table. Now, generally, I'll sometimes put him in the back, but today he's been taking some wonderful pictures. And I hope he get to take some more of them for us. Let's um, give a big hand out to um, Fozzie. Thank you very much. I also have to say, um, Dr. Olu, uh, where is she? Oh, okay. <laughs> I want to thank you for your kind words when we met this morning. And it's always a privilege. We will get to know each other as we go on. I'm a new member. My name is David Smith, and I'm from Scarborough Center. I'm a member of the governing party on the Premier Doug Ford. And I bring greetings from, from the Premier and my colleagues at the Assembly. So I start off by saying good morning and thank Sorry. Book is in the way, so I may have. I'm honored to be here today, to be here today. And I'd like to congratulate the Castle Foundation on making the 12th year of this summit. I appreciate your work to bring together Africans and Canadian leaders, service providers, work together on solutions to the economic challenge we face. Connecting business, government, so we so can we together, together I work on this important to bring together endeavor after, after the pandemic we had. I know it's also important to my colleague, Monty McNaughton, Ontario Minister of Labor, Immigration, Training and Skills Development. Things only work when everybody work together, business, labor, people, and government. This is a guiding principle of our government. Here in Ontario, our government have been working to solve two important challenges that I know many of you from other jurisdictions can relate to. And while these problems are separate, the solutions are linked. First, there are too many people struggling to find good jobs. Across Ontario, over 800,000 people rely on social assistance. Some some are people looking for a second chance. Others simply are underemployed. Second, Ontario is in the middle 
of a historic labor shortage. Every day, there are more than 360,000 jobs going on fill. Each one represent an uncollected paycheck and families going another day without. The inability, inabilities to fill these jobs pull back business from growing and spreading prosperity. Makes it harder to build infrastructure on time and on budget and contributes to the rising costs of living that families are faced, facing every day. Of course, government can do this. We can't do this work alone. That is why we are glad to have strong partners. When we launched our new skill development fund last year, we were able to unleash Ontario's enormous potentials for innovation. Industries, association, employers, training providers, labor unions, and municipalities almost overwhelmed us with project proposals. The CASA Foundation Skills Development Program provide training in digital technology, social media, marketing, e-commerce, financial skills, and much more. And importantly, graduates are paid for a three months job placement to hone their new skills and build their resumes. So thank you, CASA, for your partnership in this innovation, innovative new program. In September, we announced the third round of funding for skills development funds with, addition, with an additional $90 million. Please, if anyone is in this room that is interested, please do your applications. There's $90 million more on the table for places like CASA and other organizations. Who's looking to get those funds gets a shot at a better life. In my closing, I believe that the Ontario government believe Canadian dreams is well alive and well. It is time we make it a reality for more people with summits like the Casa Foundation and Friends of Africa. Where government, business, entrepreneur and service providers can collaborate on common challenges. Make me optimistic that we are on the right course towards improving prosperity for our citizens on both sides of the Atlantic. Thank you very much. Thank you again and have fun. President of CASA Foundation for Economic Development, the founder of the Friends of Africa Economic Development Summit, to introduce our keynote speaker and with great pleasure over to you. All right. Thank you again, everyone. Thank you. It's good to be back from lunch. Uh, a late lunch, right? And uh, if we could have uh, some of those other people taking their further shots at the uh, uh, further booth, that would be great uh, to have everyone come back in so we can have a closing ceremony. Uh, that would be great. That would be great. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure. It gives me great honor to introduce to us um, the final keynote speaker, the closing keynote today. Um, the closing keynote speaker today is uh, the Honorable Ahmed Hussein. Uh, the Honorable Ahmed Hussein, uh, Canada's Minister for Housing, Diversity and Inclusion. 
And uh, before then, he was the Minister of Immigration, Citizenship and Immigration. And so he's, he's been wearing all this hat, taking care of all of us, being in charge of immigration. And as you can tell, uh, I'm sure about 60% of the people in the room today are immigrants from different parts of Africa. And I reckon that at some point in the foyer, uh, if I allow, then you get to ask him a few questions and take uh, three shots, all right? So we've had a long day, I know for sure. We started at about uh, nine o'clock and we've been here. Uh, but then he absolutely has uh, very useful information that you can also take away with you. And so uh, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with me the Honorable Minister Hamed Hussein. collaboration, win-win uh, trade and investment, and economic development that affects everyone, meaning inclusive economic development. And we know that uh, one thing that the pandemic highlighted is that we have had to uh, face the challenges in an inclusive way. For example, today, we had a report that highlighted not good enough to do uh, access to vaccines for one country and not for another. And for us to keep going and make sure that everyone has access. So think of that as the, think of bringing that same approach to economic growth in Africa. By investing in others, you're actually investing in yourself. Because by investing in others, you're investing in and infrastructure, you're building, in essence, an inclusive Africa, which is my view. And in Canada, what we really interested in is progressive economic growth, growth that includes everyone, growth that, uh, that transitions us to the green economy, growth that doesn't uh, adversely affect environmental and labor. Think of the two different approaches. There is one approach uh, that is in trade and global exchange of goods and services and ideas that is really a race to the bottom. But instead of that, I think that uh, the opportunity that Canada and many other countries have together is the potential for a much more innovative approach. And I say that because in many ways, approach to issues around uh, access to markets doesn't involve the lowest common common denominator. In fact, we have tried through our progressive uh, free trade agreements with Europe, with the Pacific and others, we've really tried to make sure that we are building up the capacity and building up the expectations for that going forward. So that we strengthen as we conclude trade agreements and agreements for access to markets and people, that we try to gently encourage uh, a raising of the standard with respect to the environment, with respect to labor rights, with respect to good health. One of the things that really amazes me is how, just how much people outside of Canada are aware of this. I was sitting across uh, the table from the 2000, from excuse me, December 2014 I was sitting across the table from the Kenyan president, and he told me, he said, we want Canadian investors, companies to come and invest in Africa to help us uh, access newly found oil capacity. And I said, why can't, why a Canadian company? And he said, well, uh, why are you so keen on a Canadian company, a Canadian company? And he said, because you're one of the few countries in the world, if not the only one, that has somehow figured out how to co-manage natural resources with indigenous people. And he said that the part of Kenya that, uh, that they were looking to extract those uh, petroleum products from, 
uh, was the indigenous territory of the indigenous people of a very remote part of Kenya. And he said, we don't want to make the same mistake that Africa has made. We look to Canada to provide us with some sort of uh, sharing of the lessons that you've had in terms of co-managing natural resources in this country. A win-win for both of us. And I almost fell off my chair because I didn't know that he knew that. And I thought, wow, that, that is a really interesting selling point for Canadian business. The other one is also an ability to somehow leapfrog over what is now considered a, a, a barrier. So think of, for example, an African country that maybe has half of its population not having access to electricity, right? You may think of that as a challenge, and it is, of course. But in today's world, that could also be an opportunity to completely uh, jump over the 20th century and actually for the remaining 50% of the country that is not electrified, instead of repeating the same uh, electrical uh, uh, power that is emanating through fossil fuels, uh, maybe that is an opportunity for them to access Canadian technology to then electrify that remaining 50% of the country with a decentralized and green energy. So when you look at energy, when you look at uh, infrastructure, when you look at uh, education sector, healthcare sector, there is a lot of uh, potential there for access uh, to win-win uh, economic partnership and recovery that really includes everyone. Um, and I think part of the challenge that we have together, and when I say we, I mean Canada and, and, uh, and the major African economies, is that we haven't really uh, dug too deep into that potential. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that I tell my colleagues uh, in government is you have to be there. If you're not there, you're not part of the conversation. And so I, I, I also uh, believe that we also have a lot of work to do in Canada to position ourselves to be uh, an alternative partner to many African countries in terms of being able to provide sectors that are willing to embrace technology, that are willing to work together with us to really deal with these uh, transnational issues around global warming, around uh, resource management, and around access to, uh, to a fair, equitable, and inclusive trade and uh, economic system. So I think the, the global recovery that, uh, that, that has to happen after COVID, uh, I always say that that global recovery you know, people say we have to go back to normal. I always say that we, we should absolutely not go back to normal because normal was part of the problem. Uh, going back to the same norms where there is economic development in, in, in all our countries, but it, it's not inclusive and people who are doing well keep doing better, but then, you know, you, you don't have that prosperity lifting everyone. We can't go back to that. What we need to do is we need to have and work together and prioritize a global economic recovery that is inclusive of everyone, both in Canada and in our African partners. And, uh, the, 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 and it starts from in entrepreneurship. It starts from uh, not just access to markets, but uh, the, the ability to access capital, which is a, a big barrier, as we know, for a lot of One thing that I would really uh, like to kind of, that I, I do share with everyone, but I, but I think that uh, those of you in this room and beyond should share, is that Africa has the, has the highest return on investment of any emerging market in the world. Not a lot of people know that, but I think more and more people should know that. And I particularly think more and more small, medium, and large enterprises in Canada must know that because as a small country with a large geography, our economic future, our future prosperity is tied to trade. Now, how can we say that we're a trading nation when we, uh, when we have not uh, really harnessed the potential to be present in the highest return on investment emerging market? Nigeria alone is projected to be the third most populated country in a few decades. So we have to be in Africa and we have to be there for win-win trade and investment 
for inclusive economic growth and for resource management that, that, that enhances our ability to protect the environment and eliminate poverty. So I think the, the approaches that we are having locally here as a government could easily be replicated in our relationships with the, uh, with the African continent. And I, I say this, and I still am a believer in the possibility of this, and I told the Prime Minister when we went to, uh, to Addis Ababa for the African Union Summit in, in 2019, uh, no, sorry, in 2020, that Canada has the opportunity and the, and the chance to be the first non-African signatory to the, uh, to, the common, to, the, to, to the world's largest, in terms of geography, not population, the world's geographically largest uh, free trade area, which is in Africa. And we need, again, to harness that, those opportunities and create a robust and working relationship that really enables us to, to prosper and succeed, but also enables economic development of many sectors of, of, of the African, uh, African countries' uh, economies, but also population. We know that uh, through our um, Invest in Canada approach, but also through the uh, Federal Trade Commissioner Service, there's many opportunities for Canadian small, medium, and large enterprises to harness that, uh, that, that, that global infrastructure that we've set up as a government to access markets, to access uh, op business opportunities, but to also access the export uh, guarantees that, that are provided through EDC and others. But the other one is also to look at ways in which we can really utilize and harness and encourage the large and growing African-Canadian community. They're the best ambassadors for the continent. They're the ones who can enable us as a country through our uh, successful businesses to be able to not only uh, be aware of, of, the, uh, of the demand and the, and the market in Africa, but also to expand. The final thing I'll say is on IP. If you're not investing in, in intellectual property, you're not really utilizing the true potential of your business. Uh, businesses that invest and make a priority of IP uh, 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 not only make more money than other businesses, they pay their employees more, they have more solid footing in terms of uh, protecting their, their intellectual property, but uh, in essence, they can compete uh, from a much stronger point. So it is something that I think uh, both Canadian and African businesses and, and ent enterprises need to highlight and, and prioritize because without IP, you are at risk of not only um, growing your business, but actually falling behind. So I, I want to really uh, leave you with my perspective of, of what you are trying to, to raise awareness of, which is that, look, we're in a moment of time where we're going through a number of transitions. Number one, we, we're transitioning away from COVID into reopening the global economy. It is an opportunity, as I said, to reimagine what that recovery will look like. And I, I, I want to highlight again, we can't go back to, uh, to, to the previous normal. We have to create a better, more inclusive economic recovery post-COVID. That's number one. The, the second one is how do we manage the transition to a green economy? Uh, we will always, on some level or the other, still rely on, uh, on hydrocarbons for, for fertilizer and other things. But essentially, uh, given the, the, uh, the urgency of, of climate change, we have to look at not only the imperative of moving to, to uh, clean tech, but the economic opportunity that comes with it. It's, it's estimated that the global clean tech uh, economic pie is, is estimated to be about $15 trillion. Now imagine if Canadian technology can be harnessed in conjunction with, with, uh, with the investments that are being made by major African countries uh, to, to harness the power of, uh, of clean tech. But not only harness it in terms of research and development, but actually commercialize it beyond that. We, we have the ability to do that. And that's why I kept going back to the opportunities that exist on the ground in terms of electrification, in terms of uh, transport infrastructure, in terms of uh, you know, global hubs, even in terms of space. Uh, all the countries that are, that are situated on the equator in Africa can, and some of them are already harnessing the commercial possibilities of space. So there's a lot that I think we can do together. And what you're doing here is highlighting 
uh, that opportunity, but I just wanted to add a little bit of flavor from the Government of Canada side on why this is an important potential relationship that can really, really lead to uh, better economic outcomes, more inclusive uh, and, 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 and more um, uh, uh, marching to the top type of idea for both, uh, for both peoples. And it is th that measurement that this will be measured in, which is, are women succeeding in this relationship? Are young people having access to capital? Are we, ha are we investing in, in industries that have multiple impacts in terms of job creation, but also protecting the environment? So I think we've seen um, from, from other relationships how that hasn't quite worked out. But in Canada, uh, you know, all the things that, that, uh, that Canada used to, used to be looked at for in the past in, in, in sort of like a, uh, a too cautious country are actually now working for us in a, in, a, in a world that is now full of conflict and instability. You know that in Canada, you have stability, you have rule of law, you have uh, the ability to harness an amazing immigration system that can allow you as an investor to bring your, uh, your talent here and circular migration that actually allows for win-win uh, trade and investment in a way that simply doesn't exist anywhere else. So that's the value proposition that we're offering. Uh, huge prioritization of research and development, intellectual property, and uh, the ability to actually work together to harness our collective uh, uh, educational and research and development capacities to enable both our peoples to actually benefit from the emerging uh, transition away from uh, fossil fuels. So thank you for everything that, uh, that you're doing. And I, I, I look forward to more things to come and, and hearing more uh, about that collaboration between Canada and, and the highest earning uh, emerging market in the world, which is Africa. Merci beaucoup tout le monde.